California will not allow any internal combustion consumer vehicles to be sold in-state by 2035, and China has committed to making their entire country carbon neutral by 2060. That's the end of the Ice Age, folks. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. If you enjoyed the video, definitely make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more. And also, hey, we finally hit the 500 subscriber mark. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so there is giveaway details at the end of this video. So watch to the end, or I guess you can skip to the end, but hopefully it's interesting enough to watch. In the meantime, let's get to the video. Within about 24 hours of each other, California announced that they are not going to allow sales of ICE cars or internal combustion engine cars, hence the joke, right, uh, within their state starting in the year 2035. And China also announced a commitment to go completely carbon neutral by 2060. These are both amazing and inspiring targets, though personally I think they're a little bit on the too late side, unfortunately. And it's also unfortunate that the United States is not doing what China is doing and committing to the same thing. But what does this mean for ICE car manufacturers? And what does it mean for Tesla? And what does it mean for other EV manufacturers? If you don't know, California for a long time has been the bellwether for the rest of the United States. Since the 1970s, what they have done in terms of environmental protection, energy production, and so on, and consumer protection, et cetera, et cetera, is often followed later on by some of the rest of the United States and a lot of countries in Europe also tend to follow California's lead on this. So this is a really big deal. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Europe within the next few months, like the entire EU, announces that they're going to do the same thing that California is doing. Um, they're already heading that way anyway, so it really wouldn't be that big of a surprise for them to also announce that they're going to ban internal combustion engine cars. The one reason why they might not do that is Germany, <coughs> right? You've got VW, you've got BMW, you've got Mercedes, you've got a lot of entrenched vehicle manufacturers there that make them a lot of money. So there might be some pressure for them not to do that. But I think that there's also gonna be a huge amount of pressure for even Europe to commit to going internal combustion less by the mid 2030s. This is of course amazing news for Tesla and also for other EV manufacturers. Right, They're going to be the sole cars that will be able to be sold in one of the largest markets in California, at least in the United States. It's I think it's the largest market in the United States. Maybe Texas is bigger, but um, if I, I believe California is actually the, the larger of the two markets. But anyway, at, at any rate, that is a huge number of cars that will have to be EVs or hydrogen powered or some other green source of energy by 2035. Of course, for legacy internal combustion engine makers, that's going to be, <laughs> I bet they're losing a lot of sleep over that right now. At least the ones who are smart enough to realize what the writing on the wall is for them. So obviously 15 years from now seems like a long time, but consider this, you've got to design and build new models, you've got to build entirely new powertrain, you've got to design and build a lot of batteries. That is a huge sticking point, right? That's something that if you check back up here, I did an episode on Battery Investor Day, the the, the three terawatts plus that uh, Tesla is planning on having by 2030, that's still just a drop in the bucket. They need a lot more. They were saying at least 10 terawatts per year of battery production in order for the entire globe to start really looking at going completely EV or battery operated. So a lot of batteries are going to be needed. So it takes time to ramp all of this stuff up. So they're really, you know, this is a pretty tight timeline, honestly. And of course, these legacy companies have to get their consumers excited about their new EV offerings, right? You've got that horrible Osborne effect time period where people might go like, well, I need to buy an EV, but they don't have compelling EVs yet, but they will have some in the near future. So I'm just gonna hold off buying and these companies could easily go bankrupt. Um, there have been many people, including solving the money problem that has said that most legacy auto manufacturers are going to go out of business by 2030. And this is going to accelerate that. Also think of how this is gonna flip the script. Suddenly Tesla and other EV manufacturers are going to be the big boys. And all of the legacy manufacturers are basically just gonna be dinosaurs who make no difference anymore. So if they haven't flipped to doing EVs very rapidly, they're just gonna be left in the dust. At least companies like Volkswagen are, you know, on board and they're trying and their ID4 honestly looks like a pretty compelling product, honestly. Uh, and you know, with the 
tax credits and stuff in the U.S., it looks like it might be as much as $15,000 cheaper than a Model Y. So, you know, <laughs> good for them. But companies like Ford and GM and Fiat Chrysler and others, they just don't seem like they're even paying attention right now. And they're just going to get completely, you know, <laughs> think of a big steamroller. The steamroller of EVs is just going to crush them all into the pavement as they move on by. With luck and with a new administration that actually gives a crap about the environment, you know, I'm talking about all branches, <laughs> Democrats, Republicans, whoever in the United States. We need an administration that actually pays attention to the science and really cares about transitioning the United States to being carbon neutral, to being green as soon as we humanly can do it. It's critically important. Obviously, climate change is happening. It's really, really wrecking the environment. So I'm hoping, you know, November 3rd, maybe we'll have a little bit better luck in the future. But it's it's kind of... Um, it's kind of shameful that we don't still have EV credits for companies like Tesla because they passed some arbitrary number like 200,000 vehicles sold and they're no longer allowed to get credits. Every EV that's sold should be getting a credit no matter what for in perpetuity at least until you know 2030 or so. It's just ridiculous that's not happening. I will say kudos to other countries like China, of course, and Europe, of course, for continuing to do this and continuing to push EVs into the mainstream. Wonderful job, guys. I wish the US was uh, <laughs> doing anything these days as opposed to just digging their heels in. And by the by, in the United States at least, I don't know if they're doing it yet, but Tesla should really be pressing legislators to get on the ball and to, you know, become more like Europe and China and to really, really support the transition to EVs. I have a feeling that there's way too many coal and oil companies that are pumping money into um, the government right now for that to happen, but one can dream at least. And let's talk about China. Okay, so 2060 is definitely further out, but it's the biggest economy in the world. And by 2060, it's going to be by far the biggest economy in the world, unless something incredible happens. They're also the biggest polluter right now, but also they are a totalitarian government, so they can implement whatever they want to as soon as they want to. So, you know, as opposed to the United States and other democratic or representational governments, um, they can actually go ahead and make a plan and execute it instead of having administration changes and changes all, of all sorts of things going on that keeps, you know, derailing all of this stuff. So I, I am not in favor of totalitarian governments, but the one advantage they have is if they set a plan, they can make it happen. So obviously part of this plan is to get a completely green energy grid. That would be, you know, hydropower, wind power, solar power, whatever power, not coal or gas or anything. So that's a big, big, big part of their plan. But also part of that has got to be to transition all vehicles to EVs or other green sources, again, like hydrogen or something, by 2060. And I assume this push is going to start much, much sooner. If you think about it, vehicles have a tendency to live for about 20 years or so, you know, before they expire so easily. There are cars that are manufactured in 2000 or even before 2000 that still are running on the road. So basically, in order to go carbon neutral by 2060, they really have to be selling only EVs or green cars by about 2040 in order to make that happen. So it's not as far out as you think. And basically, it's kind of lining up with what California is doing. They're 2035 and... China's 2040-ish, but I have a feeling both of these, the state and the country, are going to be pushing really hard and aggressively to make that transition happen even faster than those target dates. Of course, with China, this could explain why there's been such a huge push to get as many EV startups working as possible, and also why they're so completely gung-ho over Tesla. Even though it's a bit further out, China is definitely the world's biggest car market, and EVs are absolutely going to dominate their I don't know. I mean, really, I would say probably within five or six years that's going to be taking place. But, you know, you'll see like a curve where the EV market's going to go like this and the ICE market's going to go like this and they're going to cross and eventually EVs are just going to completely dominate like 100%. So why Tesla stock is not at some outrageous number like $3,000 a share right now, I have no idea. By 2030, anybody who's still primarily making internal combustion engine cars is going to be headed out of business if they're not already out of business. They have to be making EVs. They have to be doing it at an aggressive and large scale by then, or they're just completely ditched. They're left behind. This is fantastic news for Tesla and Lucid and all of the 150 or so Chinese EV startups. And honestly, even for VW, like I said, I think their ID4 is actually a pretty decent car. So, you know, good for them for trying to get on board and trying to make this happen. 
it's the worst possible news for all of these other legacy manufacturers who just dug their heels in and not really done anything except, you know, created some concept cars for us. All right, and the 500 subscriber giveaway. Here is the details about it all. So first of all, you have to be subscribed in order to be entered into the contest. Number two, just leave a comment in the comment section down below. So you can leave a short comment, you can leave a long one, you know, you can actually talk to me, but you can just leave a thing that says like, I don't know, <laughs> thumbs up or something like that, or give me a prize or whatever. On October 10th, my wife is going to randomly pick one of your comments out of the list. We will then pin that to the top. You can then come back and check on the 10th or 11th, and if you see your name pinned to the top with like a, you know, a reply from us that says you won, you will actually win your very own copy of... Aha! <laughs> the Atlas Obscura. Really, really cool book. I'm going to order you your very own copy. That one actually is signed by my wife, so I can't give you that one. But <laughs> anyway, you've seen it back there a lot during my video episodes, so therefore you can have one of your very own. It's a cool book. It's got a lot of weird, obscure facts, and I think you'll really enjoy it if you like this channel for sure. Okay, so good luck in the contest. I'm really happy that we've reached this many. We will definitely have another giveaway when we reach a thousand subscribers, so definitely make sure you pay attention to that one, and certainly make sure you subscribe so you can be involved in this contest and then the next one we have also. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, for sure give it a like. Hopefully you've already subscribed for the contest. And also ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.